Hello, Secure Code Warriors. I hope that you're all having a great Dev Olympics. Atlassian is delighted to participate in this global tournament. My name is Alice White, and I'm the Security Training Manager at Atlassian and part of the Trust Culture and Training Team. I hope that you're all inspired to keep securing our ecosystem with developer led security and secure coding. Baking in security from the beginning helps us to ship quality code faster. We call this shifting security left. But not only do we need to shift it left, uh, which is the first line of code, it's into the design phase, it's into architecture, but we also need to shift it right to our customers and community that include our family and friends. So we also need layers of security, which is defense in depth. So we incorporate security up and down the layers of controls to best manage risks and deliver products and experiences that are trusted by our customers. So at Atlassian, we have five values and these values guide what we do, what we create and who we hire. Training is aligned to the Atlassian values. And there are also four elements that I've pulled to the forefront of all security training that I develop. Firstly, pathways. If it's really difficult to navigate what you're meant to do, when you're meant to do it, why you should be doing it, it makes it harder to drive uptake of the training. Putting in pathways that allow people to choose their own adventure has gave much, gained much more traction in terms of the amount of security training completed. We've developed a white belt training in Secure Code Warrior, which is a baseline secure coding course and assessment for all developers at Atlassian. They can then choose to continue on to the yellow belt or other security training that's relevant to their role. Making sure the content is relevant to the target audience is also really important. So instead of just training on the OWASP top 10, we train on the Atlassian top 10 vulnerabilities that we see through our vulnerability funnel. Our vulnerability funnel is our internal vulnerability management solution, which takes vulnerabilities from multiple sources, such as scanners, bug bounty reports, red team operations, and day-to-day -day testing, and creates a JIRA ticket with all that metadata on it. Also included is a link to specific training and background knowledge about that vulnerability to really support timely remediation if the developer is not familiar with the vulnerability. The ticket is then assigned to the relevant security champion or engineering manager for review and action. Each vulnerability ticket has a resolution and remediation time based on the severity of the vulnerability. Relevant training resources are injected into vulnerability remediation tickets. Attention spans are not as long as they used to be. Therefore, rarely do trainings go more for more than one hour. The annual security training, which is about 55 minutes, takes all employees into a hacker's mind as part of an escape room style challenge where they have to collect passphrases to complete the training. Generally, we make training bite size, no more than 15 to 30 minutes. We're even aiming for shorter training moments like pop-ups and prompts when Atlassians have to make a security decision. The last piece of the puzzle, which isn't the easiest one, is to gamify training. I found that a lot of developers are quite competitive and we've had great training engagement success through tournaments with the right support and also pitting product engineering teams against each other on a leaderboard to have the best security scorecard. Competitions like the fastest Fisher with a PH rewards the team who spots and reports a phishing simulation email the fastest. It works well even for low incentives such as a $20 gift card, a trophy bought at the op shop, bragging rights, or the opportunity to design the next phishing simulation template sent out to the whole company. Security training is also aligned with growth plans. You might know these as career and skill development plans. There are four expectations at Atlassian. Lead and inspire, master the craft, drive outcomes, and have customer impact. Master the craft includes mastering secure coding. Tying training to growth plans helps us address the what's in it for me and why should I be taking this training, and also encourage continual learning as part of your growth plan. Success measures are really important to demonstrate value and return on investment for training. We currently measure developers and engineers level of engagement with training platforms, courses and assessments and post training surveys. And the post training surveys always start with two questions. Did you add to your skills and knowledge by completing this training and assessment? And would you recommend this training to a colleague in a similar position to yourself? 
We've had over 90% of respondents say that they added to their secure coding skills and knowledge by completing the training, the white belt, which is a course and assessment, along with tournaments. On the second question, that's measuring NPS. A lot of customer centric organizations use NPS, which is net promoter score, to measure customer satisfaction from the interactions they've had with people, processes or technology. The NPS score for training over the last six months has been 42, which is really positive. And for those that aren't so familiar with NPS, in other words, 95% of the people surveyed gave the white belt training and the tournament seven, eight, nine, or 10 out of 10 rating. A short concept that I'd like to introduce you to is a near miss. And this is actually borrowed from the health and safety profession. And I want you to take a look at these near misses to give you some visualization of what a near miss is. And then I wanna to talk to you about how we can recognize near misses uh, from a security perspective in code or in our applications. You can see the lights start flashing there. Most people will recognize this as a train crossing. Ooh, second near miss. Third near miss, fourth near miss. Imagine it being a driver and seeing this. A near miss in the security context is a red team operation or even a penetration test. It's an opportunity to test people, process and technology under real world conditions without real world consequences. The red team are a friendly bunch of hackers lurking among us. They simulate real world attacks with a mission to compromise accounts, products, code, networks, with the outcome being to build resilience and test and ta challenge detection capabilities, but also the business's ability to react and respond. A penetration test has a bit more structure around it and usually time boxed, with the aim of finding vul vulnerabilities that compromise confidentiality, integrity and availability of systems and services. Following a red team operation or penetration tests, the findings are reported and an action plan is put into a place to address any vulnerabilities found. A red team operation or a penetration test is like a safety near miss. It presents a great opportunity to learn. All the findings and what could have happened are laid out on the table and addressed by all the relevant internal teams. At Atlassian, we recently started experimenting with just-in-time training post a near miss. In this case, it was a red team operation called Big Misunderstanding. Now, I can't tell you what the red team found and compromised before the operation all came to an abrupt end when a savvy developer reported some suspicious activity to our security intelligence team. But what I can tell you is that the red team had a bag of loot from their operation. And not only those showing the loot in the post-incident review needed to take action. In the future, it might not be the red team, but it might be a real attacker. This presented an opportunity to experiment with just-in-time training post the operation. The training came in the format of an entertaining video with a theme song that was narrated by the red team, our incident responders, and a few others. The content and the story about the operation in the training video was able to be understood and consumed by the whole company and not just necessarily the engineering teams. One of the biggest learnings was the impact of timely reporting of suspicious activities on accounts and networks. Understanding how to report a security incident and when to report a security incident is critical for the whole company. One of the three learning outcomes had a slogan, if you see something sus, say something. Along with this training video, there was a technical blog going into the juicy details of all the findings and hacks that the red team used along with how the security intelligence team detected and responded to the incident. There was also a red team camp. This is where subject matter experts, the red team, impacted engineering teams and other interested parties like security champions were all invited into a workshop to determine what else could have happened. What else could the red team have done with their bag of loot? 
This takes it one step further to really ensure that we're learning from a near miss that was the red team operation, big misunderstanding. Security champions are one of the biggest assets I saw when I arrived at Atlassian with over 300 champions in the network acting as a real community. At Atlassian, there's a requirement or a request to have 5% of all engineering teams signed up as security champions. Now, being a security champion is a voluntary position and we do ask people to put their hands up. It's not without roles and responsibilities and are not without a challenge. But we support the security champions with monthly meetings where it's not only the security team presenting on all things interesting and uh, new and new threats and the latest hack, but it's also the security champions presenting what they've found or what they saw uh, in the security news uh, reel that might be going on. So it's really a community to share learnings. And they're also the first, uh, the first point of call if we have an incident related to security uh, and it's related to their product as well. So the security team engages the champions and they become a really important part of the incident management and vulnerability management process as well. And with that responsibility and being the first port of call, they need some extra training guidance and support and mentoring, which is also available as part of the program. So these champions really need to be nurtured and looked after and have specific training developed for them. And they're such a great asset to have the extension of, a, of the security team in the product engineering teams. Um, it's a really what, a great way to scale security and as my presentation started with, shift security everywhere through the Security Champions Network. To finish up, let's talk about reward and recognition, which is a really important part of any security program and Security Champions program. We use swag, kudos and badges at Atlassian. Swag, including this Security Champions t-shirt. We also have limited edition security blankets for those that go above and beyond to improve security at Atlassian. Kudos, which is our internal recognition system where anybody can call out another staff member and how they demonstrated the values. Badges, both internal and external, are really important to demonstrate what security training or what security skills a developer or engineer has. Thanks for your time and I hope you have a great DevLympics.